Hey, just a reminder that this is the piss take version of the Inception look. If you want the serious one, you gotta look down below. Our film opens with Leonardo DiCaprio on a beach, but despite any desperate hopes, this is not how Jack survived the sinking of the Titanic and went on to become the Great Gatsby. He's picked up and dragged to see the big cheese. Are you here to kill me? Because I do it myself, but I'm too damn old. Soon there's a flashback, or all of this is a flash forward, it depends on your point of view. And in a Nolan film, that's something you usually have to cling to. Otherwise, it's like trying to do pin the tail on the donkey while drunk during an earthquake. Sato is now much, much younger and having a dinner meeting with Cobb and Arthur about the possibility of stealing your thoughts while you're dreaming. Well, we can help. With this handy-dandy tinfoil hat! While he thinks about that, we get a tremor. We're in a dream, and outside... Just another day in the 2020s out there. In the dream, Cobb and Arthur spot someone named Maul, much to Arthur's annoyance, which is not usually the complaint. It's not like it's an actual party in the dream world where infuriating acquaintances sometimes show up to start drinking all the expensive booze. Cobb tries to talk with her and enlists her help, which consists solely of sitting in that chair. Sorry to have demanded too much of you. Cobb slips inside anyway, takes out some of Sato's mooks, then breaches the safe in the room where they started. Only Maul and Sato catch him in the act. Of course, this is all still a dream, so the guns are pointless. Killing someone only wakes them up. Okay, admittedly, there's a flaw in the plan. Cobb shoots Arthur in the head because what are friends for? Arthur's the one having this dream, which makes removing him from it kind of like cutting through a load-bearing wall. Things do not look good for this place. Between the collapsing house and the firefight, Cobb looks through the file that he stole, but parts of it are redacted. That's bad. Worse, the collapsing house kills Sato, and since that just wakes you up, he comes to and pulls out a gun. Little advice when you kidnap someone. Take away their firearms. So, to get Cobb to snap out of it, they shove him into a full bathtub, although who hasn't wanted to do that to someone at one point? Welcome to every month at my house. Hey, it looks like the local sports team won. Cobb and Arthur start questioning Sato, but he's unimpressed. He'd heard that Cobb was supposed to be the best. Come on. We all have standards. We don't want to be mugged by someone who's half-assing it. It's embarrassing for both of us. But when Cobb throws him on the floor, the composition of the carpet reveals that they're actually in a dream. They embedded the first one in a second one. And that's not so easy. Just ask anybody who's ever tried to use an emulator. So that means that they're not getting the info out of Sato. I mean, he's impressed, but not impressed enough to give up his own personal secrets. There's a threshold, and you've definitely not reached it. Soon the mob breaks in and kills the third guy called the Architect, so they can proceed to complain about who's to blame for this perfectly straightforward dream within a dream heist of knowledge plan failing somehow. It's starting to think it might have been overcomplicated. Later, Cobb spins a top. We'd seen it earlier taken off of him. And he's holding up a gun. Ah, I can see you've played this game in Singapore before, Cobb. When the top falls, he puts the gun down, just in time for a call from his kids, who are wondering when he's coming back. I told you I'm, I'm, I'm away because I'm working, right? Grandma says you're never coming back. Yeah, well, Grandma's just jealous because I have a meme. Arthur shows up for the exit, failing to find the expansion plans their employer was looking for is going to make them wanted men. A company will hunt them down and make an example of them. Standard practice. That's why nobody dares to cross Nabisco. Anyway, the helicopter is already occupied with Sato and their architect. He saw the art. Thought to come to me and bargain for his life. So, I offer you the satisfaction. Yep, that is the slogan for Nabisco in Japan, all right. Chips ahoy! I offer you the satisfaction! Cobb decides not to shoot the guy, so we can table that and the reading of the minutes to get down to the agenda. Inception. Planting something in someone's head and making them think it was their idea, also known as Kanye Syndrome. Cobb and Arthur plan to walk away, 
But when Sato offers to square things so that Cobb can go back home without being tossed into prison the moment that his shoes hit American soil, Cobb can't say no. Instead, they head to Paris to meet with his father-in-law to try to find a new architect to build dream structures. You're here to corrupt one of my brightest and best. With this face, how could you even think such a thing? He introduces Cobb to Ariadne. The actor who plays this character refers to Ariadne as female, so that is what I intend to do. I'm going to repeat that over on the discussing video. That's the one where I get into all the symbolism and narrative structure stuff. Uh, those videos are the ones where I get into talking about the lens that they use. This is the one where I have to struggle in vain not to make quotes from The Wolf of Wall Street. After testing her ability to draw mazes on demand, by the way, Mazes on Demand was Comcast's worst cable service idea ever. Cobb explains that dreams operate on a loop of both creation and discovery. One part of us is experiencing the dream, while the other is creating it. And the creating one apparently likes fucking with the other one, so you wake up wondering why you were flying into a coal mine on a giant cigar. To demonstrate the meta of it, Cobb is discussing this in a dream. This is your subconscious telling you not to eat at Taco Bell. And this is just to taunt the Flat Earthers. She plays around with things even though Cobb warns that the people, projections of his subconscious, are eventually going to come over and kick her ass for doing this. Wake me up! Wake me up! Yeah, it's that old adage. Those who play God will always get murdered by an angry mob. I don't know if, if you can't see what's going on or if you just don't want to, but Cobb has some serious problems that he's tried to bury down there, and I'm not about to just open my mind to someone like that. Yeesh, you act like you've never been stabbed in the gut before. Not to worry, Cobb says she'll come back, but Arthur's going to have to handle the training, hopefully with less knife play. Cobb, on the other hand, is going to meet with the next member of the team, Eames. There's plenty of good thieves. We don't just need a thief. We need a cleric, or else our party is never going to survive Tomb of Horrors. So we meet up with Eames, an expert at impersonating others in dreams, appropriate since you might recognize him as Shinzen, the clone of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Obviously, he'll need to do a better job here. You need the simplest version of the idea in order for it to grow naturally in your subject's mind. That's a very subtle art. So what is this idea that you need to plan? We need the heir of a major corporation to dissolve his father's empire. Oh, corporate politics. Nothing complicated about that. You can find the guide for that on the back of a book of matches, I'm sure. It'd be great to discuss this a bit, but there's a bounty hunter after cop thanks to the botched job with Sato, so that's going to be a problem. Can't do the job if he's frozen in carbonite, can he? Luckily, he's able to shake them. Zungu. Oh, problem. This guy wants his money back for Catch Me If You Can. He has to escape down an alley, but there's a problem there. Well, if this is a dream, it must be a reminder to call my mom. He escapes into Sato's car, while back in Paris, Ariadne returns and Arthur starts breaking out the M.C. Escher for her, to explain how to keep the projections confused so they don't start screwing with their crap, if I may be technical. Meanwhile, Eames introduces Cobb and Sato to Yusuf, explaining that they need a compound that will allow them to go three levels deep, and for him to help out on the inside so that they've got a chemist who knows what he's doing. Not sure how it works in a dream, if you just conjure whatever it is you need, but probably be good to have someone who knows the details either way. Maybe it's as simple as thinking sleep potion, or maybe it requires summoning a cartoon mallet. Who knows? He shows how good his stuff works by taking the trio downstairs to watch a bunch of old-timers sharing a dream that they do, well, every single day, actually. You see? Uh, is there a special rate I can pay for you not to slap me while I'm sleeping? Oh no, he did pay me to do that. It means that I won't teabag him. So we've got a forger, a chemist, an architect, oh, and a rich tourist. Sato insists on going inside with them when this happens. 
claiming he needs to see the job get done. Although this isn't like having a champion racehorse mount your mare while you are standing nearby to make sure it's done right. It's a, a bit more complicated than that. So Robert Fisher's dad is an uber-mega corporate empire giant. He, he's the kind of guy who asks Jeff Bezos how his little startup is coming along. He's the kind of guy who throws his keys at Bill Gates and tells him to park his car. And he's about to crush Sato's company. The only good thing about the guy is that he's dying, but it's all going to go to his son then. The two have a strained relationship with Peter Browning, Robert's godfather and the old geezer's right-hand man, right in the middle of all of this. He's going to be central to the plan. That's why Eames is learning how to impersonate him. In dreams, I mean, not for parties. Ariadne spots Cobb after they're done working and brings up the unpleasant business with Maul. Gets stabbed one time and some people just can't let it go. Cobb explains the problem he's dealing with is that they think he murdered Maul, so Sato is going to fix it if they get this job done. He's rich, they can do that sort of thing. On the weekends, they tie orphans to the backs of their helicopters and hold races. They start hashing out a plan of attack for this. You can't just head into someone's dream plunk, I am going to take a shit on the altar during my daughter's wedding and expect that the bride's father is just going to do it. There's got to be some strategy to it. you got to make it seem like a good idea, you know, like lots of rum and a bet with a hefty Australian sailor. The plan is going to be to do it on a plane. The private jet will be sabotaged, so Fisher's going to have to schlep across the ocean in first class with the great unwashed. That gives them a chance to buy out the first class cabin, knock him out, and make with the dreaming. So they get to work getting all the details ironed out, but one night when Ariadne spots Cobb using the dreaming device, she hops on to join him. The party crasher of dreams, that one. She sees Cobb talking with Maul in a number of scenarios until... You promised! You promised! Please, I need you to stay here just for now. You said we'd be together! You... Yeah, she's a keeper.